In this video, we compiled all the authentic narrations about the private, intimate life between the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his wife Aisha. If you're young and not married yet, you have to watch this before getting married. And if you're already married, this video will fix a lot of your marriage problems. And if you're one of those Islamophobes who keeps talking about age of Aisha day and night, you really need to watch this. We stayed away from weak narrations and sticked only to authentic ones and demonstrated the whole video into a form of a story of a modern couple to highlight the differences. Get your coffee first and let's start. This is Nada. Nada has just graduated from medical school at a local university and majored in psychology. Shadi, who is two years older than her, proposed to her after completing his internship in psychology as well at a hospital in Australia. Nada, who's 26, accepted his proposal and they got married. They lived somewhat happily for a while. Their spring didn't last long and a long fall entered their lives. One day, Nada came home early from work. Shadi was not back yet. She entered the office, grabbed a pen and paper, and started writing. What are my problems with Shadi? Shadi is harsh. He no longer expresses his love for me. I'm starting to wonder if he ever loved me. I was sick once, yet he showed me no kindness or special care during my period. I'm sometimes irritable during these times, and he is inconsiderate. As a psychiatrist, he should understand what I go through. He ridicules my feminine interests, makes me feel unworthy of respect, and never cares about my possessions. When my bracelet broke, the one that I got as a gift from my mother. I asked him to fix it. It has been on the side table in front of him for months now. Whenever I remind him, he says, today or tomorrow. He selfishly puts his needs ahead of mine. Sometimes, we both get home late from work and there is no food at home. Yet, if one of his friends invites him, he goes without even bothering to check on me. The time Shady spends with me is not quality time. His mind is preoccupied. We are together, but our souls are far apart. He brings his work problems home. I don't feel secure with him. And on the other hand, he doesn't share his joyous moments with me. If I expand on a topic, he interrupts me and asks me to cut it short and grumbles about my many questions. He has become bored with me. It's very hurtful, especially since he's so attentive and cheerful with his female work colleagues. For example, he gets furious if I am two minutes late while he waits for me in the car. Yet once, when his female colleague was 15 minutes late and apologized, his answer was no problem whatsoever. I picked up his phone once and sent his secretary on his behalf a text, asking her to stop sending unnecessary texts like good morning, good evening. I was jealous. When he found out, he was angry and stopped talking to me for days. He also set a password on his phone to block my access. I feel my personality has been subdued and crushed by him. I feel insecure and undermined in front of others when I'm with him. He responds to my jealousy by showing me that he distrusts me, accusing me of flirting with my male colleagues and of being attracted to one of them. When the maid is on vacation, he doesn't help around the house although he's always posting about women's rights and women's victimhood. He never cleans up after taking a shower, but leaves his stuff everywhere and expects me to clean up after him. Why does he do that if he truly believes in gender equality? Recently, he started smoking, and I dislike the smell of smoke. Little things are easily provoking me lately. Why doesn't he dress up for me as he dress for other people? I started to like it better when he's away. The worst thing about Shadi is that in front of people, he appears to be full of kindness and affection, but this kindness disappears when we're alone. 
He justifies this by saying that he's under pressure, dealing with life's many problems, and that he is obligated to treat people nicely due to the nature of his work as a psychiatrist. There are aspects of his private life that I'm embarrassed to bring up because it would greatly offend him. My perception of him has become so shaky that I'm repulsed by our intimate relationship as a married couple, as if I'm doing something shameful. He's too proud to show any vulnerabilities with me. Instead, he directs his anger at me when his vulnerabilities are exposed. I no longer care about his interests. Now, I intentionally oppose him in everything. I don't want to be like him in anything. I'm exhausted from dealing with him even though I am a psychiatrist. Once, I asked him for a divorce. He hinted that he wouldn't let me keep anything that wasn't registered under my name. I shared these problems with some friends hoping that they would help me to find a solution. However, it seems that they are all suffering similarly. Although our situations vary in the details and level of severity, but they are also suffering. A long time ago, I heard of a girl called Aisha and her marriage of the Messenger of Allah. Peace and blessing be upon him. Their story is different from everything that I see around me. I went through the pages of the Prophet's biography seeking advice. I heard about the high level of morality that she and her husband enjoyed. Therefore, without revealing some of my embarrassing details, I asked her 23 questions. Exactly the number of problems I have with Shadi. Nada starts by asking Aisha, Are you, Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him? Yes. May I ask you some questions? Yes, of course. Nada thought to herself, Shadi is harsh. He no longer expresses his love for me. I'm starting to doubt that he loves me. She asked, Did the Messenger of Allah express his love to you? Aisha smiled in compassion and said, He would throw kisses in the air at me while he was fasting. And when asked who was the closest person to his heart, he said Aisha, even though such love expressions were not familiar to our society. Nada thought to herself, I felt ill once, and Shadi didn't show me any kindness or special care. So she asked, Did the Prophet care for you when you were ill? Aisha responded, He was specially kind then. He would place his hand on the painful spot and pray for me. Nada thought to herself, As a woman, during my period, I get a little irritated. Yet Shadi has no concern for me, although as a psychiatrist he knows what I'm going through. She asked, Was the Messenger of Allah considerate during your period? Aisha responded, During this time, he was the nicest that a man could be. I would drink, then hand the cup to the Prophet, and he would deliberately put his mouth on the place where I drank from. I would take a bite of meat and pass it to the Prophet and he would deliberately take a bite from the same place where I bit, just to cheer me up and make me happy. One time, when I got my period while performing Hajj, I cried, fearing that it would spoil my worship. The Prophet said, This is a matter Allah has decreed for all the daughters of Adam. Then he told me what I should do. Nada thought to herself, Shadi belittles my interests and make me feel unworthy of respect. She asked, Well, did the Messenger of Allah care about your interests? Aisha smiled and said, Once, Ethiopians were dancing with spears in the mosque. The Messenger of Allah asked me, Would you like to watch them? I said yes. So he got up, walked towards the door, and I stood right behind him. I put my shin on his shoulder, my cheek against his, while he covered me with his cloak. After a while, he asked me, Is this enough? So I told him, O Messenger of Allah, do not rush. He remained standing there with me. And after a while he said, Is this enough? 
So I said again, do not rush, O Messenger of Allah. He remained standing there until I left. Once he saw some of my dolls and asked, What is this, Aisha? My daughters, I said. He saw a horse with wings among them and said, What is this that I see in the middle? So I said, a horse. He said, and what is this on him? I said, two wings. He said, a horse that has two wings? I said, haven't you heard that Sulaiman, peace be upon him, had horses with wings? The Prophet laughed so hard that I saw his back teeth. Nada asked, does that mean that you spent your youth with him? Aisha answered, exactly. I was learning everything he was doing during that time. I played, had fun, learned and worshipped. My spirit was tranquil and relaxed. His interest in me was constant, and he took care of my needs when I became a young woman. Nada thought to herself, Shadi doesn't care about my belongings. My $3,000 bracelet broke. It was a gift from my mother. It has been in front of him on the side of the table for months. Whenever I remind him of it, he says, today or tomorrow. But tomorrow never comes. So she asked, did the Prophet care about your belongings? Aisha smiled and said, I went out with him once on a journey, and the necklace of mine came apart. So the Prophet decided to stay put until we found it. His companions stayed with him too, even though they had no water not even to perform ablution. I remember this day the Messenger of Allah slept with his head on my lap. I stayed still as I hated that the Prophet might wake up and have his rest disturbed. By the way, another necklace of mine broke on a different occasion. Searching for it delayed me behind the army and resulted in what is called Al-Ifq, you know, the falsehood incident, a slanderous gossip by the hypocrites against me. The Messenger of Allah never blamed me for the repeated loss of my necklace. Nada thought to herself, Shadi selfishly ignores my needs. Sometimes we both come late from work and there is no food at home. Yet if a friend invites him, he goes out without even checking on me. So she asked, did the messenger of Allah sometimes put his needs above yours in food or drink? Aisha looked shocked and said, never. We had a Persian neighbor whose food was good. He prepared a meal for the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him. When he came to invite the Messenger of Allah, the Messenger said, and her, asking him about me, meaning, is she invited with me, included with me? The neighbor said, no. So the Messenger of Allah said, no, meaning, I cannot accept the invitation if Aisha is not invited with me. The neighbor came to invite him again, and the Messenger of Allah again said, and her, the man said, no. So the Messenger of Allah said, no. He came yet again for the third time. And the Messenger of Allah said, and her, he said, yes. So I went with the Messenger of Allah to the neighbor's house. Nada asked, why did he refuse to go alone? Aisha responded, because he knew I liked the food. And that food at our place was scarce. He wanted to share with me. We either eat together or starve together. This situation shook Nada. This meant a lot to her. Why was the food scarce at your place? She asked. Aisha responded, Money, gifts, and food used to come to the Prophet. Peace and blessing be upon him. He would give it to the poor and homeless of a sofa. He would endure in patience, and so would I. How could I not endure when I see that he refuses to eat without me? Nada said, Pardon me for this question. But did a beautiful, smart young woman like you ever get the opportunity to live a more comfortable life, even if away from the Messenger of Allah? Did you ever think of leaving him? Aisha laughed and said, Leaving him? Let me tell you something. The Prophet's wives and I asked him for some material possessions, and we kept on insisting. We were jealous of one another, each wanted him to herself as much as possible, and we would plot against each other over him. The Prophet got angry with us and stopped talking to us for a month. Then Allah sent down a Quranic verse, giving us the choice to stay with the Prophet despite the hardship, or leave him graciously in return for material compensation. 
The prophet started with me and said, Aisha, I want to run an offer by you. I would rather you didn't rush to answer until you consult with your parents. So I said, And what is it, O Messenger of Allah? Then he recited the words of Allah, which can be translated as, O Prophet, say to your wives, If you should desire the worldly life and its adornment, then come. I would provide for you and give you a gracious release. But if you should desire Allah and His Messenger, and the home of the hereafter, then indeed, Allah has prepared for the doers of good among you a great reward. The Prophet finished, expecting that I would not answer him until I consulted my parents. But I told him, Would I consult my parents about you, O Messenger of Allah? Rather, I choose Allah, His Messenger, and the hereafter. The Messenger of Allah was very happy with that. These sweet words resonated with not a soul. Such a demonstration of deep love from a girl who sees herself and her husband as one. One inseparable soul that occupies two bodies. Nada remembered how she had asked Shadi for a separation, but he hinted that he wouldn't let go of anything he bought her, unless it was officially registered in her name. So, she stayed with him for the material things, not out of care for him. In contrast, Aisha was given the opportunity to leave the Prophet and enjoy the world and its pleasures, but she chose him over everything without any hesitation. Nada thought to herself, Shadi doesn't spend quality time with me, he's always preoccupied. So she asked, the Messenger of Allah had an immense mission and many important tasks. Did you feel that he was emotionally present when he was with you? Aisha answered, he would give me his full attention when he was with me. He was present in both body and mind. He took every chance to interact with me and get closer to me, offering nice gestures that meant a lot to me. Therefore, you will find that many of his hadith are narrated by me because I wasn't on the margin of his life, but at its core. The Prophet used to recite the Quran in my lap, even while I was having my period. He was going to recite anyway, so instead of reciting it away from me, he would recite it in my lap. Nada pictured this pure and elegant scene. She imagined the Messenger of Allah reciting in a pleasant voice, his head was in Aisha's lap while she stroked his hair with her hand and listened in a state of utmost love and harmony. Aisha said, We used to have fun even while bathing. We used the same container and would fight over the water. When I jokingly told him, Leave it to me, he would say, You leave it to me, with affection, compassion, humor, and kindness. Aisha smiled and said, I traveled with him once when I was still young and light in weight. He said to his companions, move ahead, and so they did. Then he said, come, let's race. So I raced him, and I won. After that, I grew older, gained some weight, and forgot our first race. Then I accompanied him on a journey. And he told his companions, move ahead. And so they did. Then he said, come on, let's race. So I said, how do I race you, O Messenger of Allah, when I am in this condition? So he said, yes, you will. So I raised him and he won. He kept on laughing and told me that it was payback for the previous win. Nada thought to herself, Shady brings his work problems home. So she asked, didn't the burdens of life and the conspiracies of his enemies against him affect your life and security? Aisha answered, no. He left all his troubles at the doorstep once he stepped inside. So I only saw friendliness, serenity, calmness of soul, and tender intimacy. Nada asked, Do you mean you felt secure with him despite the circumstances? Aisha responded, Undoubtedly, I couldn't have felt more secure. Nada thought to herself, Shadi doesn't share his joys with me. So she asked, Did the Prophet share what pleased him with you? Aisha responded, Of course. For example, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him, came to me once. He was happy his face shining with delight. He said, Haven't you heard that Mujazzazan looked at Zayd ibn Haritha and Usama ibn Zayd and said, These feet are from one another. He was amused that a guide who tracks footprints recognized the relationship between Zayd and his son Usama from their feet, without even seeing their faces. Despite the fact that Usama's feet were black after his mother, while Zayd's feet were white. 
Nada thought to herself, if I expand with Shady on a topic he interrupts and asks me to be brief. He grumbles about my many questions. She asked, did the prophet listen to you attentively? Aisha responded, he never interrupted me. I once told him what 11 women had said about their husbands. A very long conversation. The last one was Abu Zarah's wife, whose husband treated her graciously. The Messenger of Allah listened without interrupting me. As I finished, he told me tenderly, I am to you as Abu Zarah is to Umm Zarah, meaning as gracious. Whenever I heard him saying something new, I would go over it with him until I understood it. Once he said, whoever is taken to account will be punished. I said, didn't Allah say he will soon have an easy reckoning? He said that is only the presentation of deeds. However, whoever is fully taken to account will be punished. He was delighted with my love for learning. I asked him hundreds of questions that are in the preserved hadith. He would answer me attentively without getting annoyed with my many questions or ridiculing any of them. Nada thought to herself, Shadi is becoming bored with me and he quickly gets furious with me. It's hurtful how different this behavior is from the attention and humor he shows his female colleagues. So she asked, did the Prophet become furious with you if you made a mistake? Aisha responded, no, he would teach me gently. Once, I mentioned his other wife in a demeaning way. He told me, you said a word that if it got mixed with the water of the sea, it would be enough to contaminate it. This was to strengthen my fear and reverence of Allah. He wasn't harsh with me. When I made a mistake, the most he would do was change his facial expressions. Hence, he developed my emotional sensitivity. I would read his facial expressions and adjust my behavior accordingly. Nada asked, he never raised his voice, never? Aisha smiled and said, he once told me, I know when you are pleased with me or angry with me. I said, how do you know that? He said, when you are pleased with me, you say, no, by the Lord of Muhammad. But when you are angry with me, you say, no, by the Lord of Ibrahim. I said, yes, but by Allah, O Allah's Messenger, I'm leaving nothing but your name. I only omit your name, but your love is stamped in my heart. It doesn't change in any way. Nada asked, well, and what made you upset with him? Aisha, my jealousy over him. Nada, did you love him to the extent of getting jealous and wanting him all to yourself? Aisha, how could I not love him to that extent, giving his beautiful morals? Once, during my turn to have him stay with me, he came and laid down beside me. When he thought I had fallen asleep, he quietly got up, put on his shoes and went out. I got dressed quickly and followed him to see if he's going to his other wife. It turns out he was heading to al baqiah cemetery, where some of his companions were buried. When he started heading back, I ran to arrive before him. I didn't want him to know that I went after him. When he entered, he noticed that I was out of breath. He asked why. I evaded the answer first, but then I told him. He told me that Jibreel had come to tell him that Allah ordered him to ask forgiveness for the people buried in al baqiah and he feared to wake me up and make me panic. So he went quietly. Then I asked him, what do I say when I visit the cemetery? And he taught me what to say. Nada wanted to ask how the Prophet handled Aisha's jealousy. She was ashamed to mention Shadi's behavior towards his female colleagues. Such a contrast to the lawful relationship between the Prophet and his wives. She said, how did he respond to your jealousy? Aisha smiled and said, the Messenger of Allah invited his friends one day to my house. Umm Salama, the Prophet's other wife, came with a large plate of food to honor the Prophet and his guests. I got jealous and I broke the plate with a rock in my hand. Nada gasped and stared at her. What did the Messenger of Allah do? Aisha said he gathered the broken pieces of the plate together with the food on them and said to his companions, eat, your mother got jealous, eat, your mother got jealous, meaning me. Then the messenger of Allah took one of my plates and sent it to Umm Salama, that's it.
Nada was amazed, and the matter ended just like that. Aisha said, Yes. Nada, he didn't beat you? Aisha laughed, Beat me? The Prophet never laid a hand on a woman or a servant or anyone, except of course when he was fighting the enemies in battle. Nada thought to herself, My personality has been crushed by Shadi. I feel fragile. I have low self-esteem in front of others when I'm with him. So she asked, Were you able to be yourself with the Prophet, self-confident and cheerful? Aisha smiled and said, I once prepared some food while Sauda, the Prophet's wife, was at my home. I said to her, Eat. The Messenger of Allah was between us. She said, I don't have any appetite, nor do I want to eat. I said, Eat or I will smudge your face with the food. She did not eat, so I smudged her face with the food. The Messenger of Allah laughed. Sauda then took some food and smudged my face back, and the Prophet of Allah kept laughing between us. Nada thought to herself, Shadi responds to my jealousy by showing that he mistrusts me, accusing me of flirting with male colleagues and of being attracted to one of them. So she asked, Did the Prophet think well of you? Aisha responded, Of course, yes. When the hypocrites slandered me, he defended me and said, By Allah, I have not known about my family anything except good. He meant me. He waited for a whole month, but nothing was revealed to him from the Quran in my regard. He was too considerate to confront me directly and hurt my feelings. And when he finally asked me, he said, Aisha, this is what has reached me about you. And if you are innocent, Allah would vindicate your honor. But if you have committed a sin, then ask Allah forgiveness and repent. When a servant makes a confession, Allah turns to him accepting his repentance. Then Allah revealed my innocence. Nada thought to herself, when the maid is on vacation, Shadi doesn't help around the house, even though he posts about women's rights and their ordeals. So she asked, I'm sure that the Prophet didn't help with the house chores, given that he was the messenger of Allah and the leader of the community. Aisha responded, On the contrary, he used to help at home. Then at prayer time, he went to pray. Nada was surprised and pictured an image of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, helping his wife around the house with humility and affection. Nada thought to herself, Shadi has started smoking recently and I dislike the smell of cigarettes. Small things provoke me. Why doesn't he dress up for me as he does for others? So she asked, Did the Prophet dress up for you and use scent as he did with others? Aisha responded, The Prophet would also put on perfume all the time inside and out. He ordered everyone to comb their hair and dress nicely. Nada was surprised by this. A man grooming himself for his family as men of today do for an event or an important meeting? Nada thought to herself, I have reached the point where I prefer Shadi's absence. So she asked, It is obvious that you were very attached to the Prophet. Did you ever reach the point where you couldn't bear being away from him? Aisha answered, One night, he said, Aisha, let me spend the night in worship. I told him, By Allah, I love being close to you, but I also love what pleases you. So he got up, washed, and stood up to pray. Nada said to herself, Shadi plays the part of a charitable and kind husband in front of others, but this kindness disappears with me. He justifies this by claiming to be overwhelmed and stressed from life. So she asked, Did the Prophet treat you the way he treated others? Aisha smiled and answered, Even better. He, peace and blessing be upon him, is the one who said, The best of you is the best to his family, and I am the best to my family. He set the yardstick for measuring the goodness of men by their treatment of their wives. Nada said to herself, There are aspects of Shadi's personal life that I'm ashamed to talk about because they are harmful to his image. So she asked, pardon me for this question. Is there any aspect of the Prophet's life that you don't want anyone to know about? Aisha responded, not at all. His whole life was an open book. I recounted it with all of its details. I even recounted the details of our marital intimacy to educate people. Why would I hide anything about his life when his morals were the Quran? 
everything in the Quran concerning morality was manifested in Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, both inside and out. He was as well mannered with me as he was with others. Nada thought to herself, the shaken image I have with Shadi makes me repulsed by our intimate relationship as a couple. I feel as if I'm doing something wrong. So she asked, pardon me for this question. You said you weren't embarrassed to talk about what is necessary to educate people about marital intimacy. Do you mean you didn't feel any awkwardness in your intimate life? Aisha answered, absolutely not. In Islam, intimacy between a man and his wife gets them closer to Allah. Both of the spouses are rewarded for it. This is something that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him, taught me. At the same time, do you know how Allah described me and other female believers in Surah An-Nur? When the hypocrites slandered us, Allah described us as headless. Do you know what headless means? Bad deeds and forbidden relationships do not even occur to us in our innocence and purity of soul. When I entered my home, where the Messenger of Allah and my father Abu Bakr were buried, I took off my dress and I said, they are my husband and my father. But when Omar was buried with them in my home, by Allah, I only went there fully clothed, out of my shyness of Omar, even though I am fully aware that it's not Omar, it's just his dead body buried there. But I couldn't control my shyness. Nada realized that she was dealing with a balanced character, raised in a wonderful way. She realized also that the concept of sex in Islam was completely different from its concept in contemporary materialism. Aisha continued, The Messenger of Allah who educated people in a refined way about the relationship between spouses felt no shyness in discussing permissible acts. Yet he was shy about discussing intimate feminine details with a woman. One day, a woman asked him about bathing after menstruation. He told her how to wash. He said, take a piece of cloth dipped in perfume and cleanse yourself with it. She said, how to cleanse? He said, cleanse with it. She said, how? He said, glory be to Allah, cleanse. The messenger of Allah was embarrassed to tell her to put it on the blood source. So I grabbed the woman aside and told her, follow the trace of blood with it. Nada said to herself, Shadi is too proud to show weakness. Instead, he directs his anger towards me if his vulnerabilities were exposed. So she asked, did the messenger of Allah avoid showing his vulnerability to you? Aisha answered, not at all. When he, peace and blessing be upon him, was sick on his deathbed, he asked his wife's permission to receive care at my house. At this point, Aisha's voice trembled. She could barely pull herself together. Then she continued, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him, died in my house, in my arms, with his head on my chest. My brother Abdul Rahman ibn Abu Bakr had entered the room earlier with a toothbrush. As he wake, the Messenger of Allah looked at it. I felt that he yearned for it. So I took it and chewed on it to soften it and handed it to the Prophet. He brushed his teeth with it better than I had ever seen him do. Then he tried to raise the toothbrush to me, but his hand fell. I kept on praying for him and using supplications that the Prophet himself supplicated when he was sick, but not during his final ailment. He looked up towards the sky and said, I choose the highest companion. I choose the highest companion and his soul separated. Praise to Allah, who mixed my saliva with his on his last day in the world. Nada asked, Did you state in your will that you wanted to be buried next to him? Aisha responded, I wanted that, but then chose to give my place to Omar. When Omar was stabbed, they came to me while I was crying and told me that Omar ibn al-Khattab was asking permission to be buried with his two companions. My husband, the Messenger of Allah, and my father, Abu Bakr. I said by Allah, I wanted it for myself, but today I will choose him over myself. Nada thought to herself, I no longer care about Shadi's interests. 
I intentionally oppose him in everything. I don't want to be anything like him. She asked, Do you miss your husband, the Messenger of Allah? Aisha answered, He is alive in my being. I kept his memory alive by talking about him. His words, his movements, his calmness, and his facial features. I soaked myself in his knowledge and wisdom, and I feel his pure breath in my ribs as I spread his knowledge and talk about the details of his life. Through my marriage to him, I became a mother to all believers, even though I have never given birth. Billions of Muslims until the day of resurrection love me, ask Allah to be satisfied with me, and walk in the lights that I passed on to them. Now, my great concern is to join my beloved in heaven. He was the most generous person. I follow in his footsteps and those of my father. Before, I was asking the Prophet for more money. Now I spend and I spend and leave almost nothing for myself. The Messenger of Allah said, The most loved deeds to Allah are the continuous ones, even if it's little. So now, when I do any deed, I do it repeatedly. Nada thought to herself, My emotions with Shadi are troubled, although I am a psychiatrist. Nada was embarrassed to bring up Aisha's emotional state as compared to hers. It would seem like a funny question to such an amazing person. Aisha's nephew, Urwa ibn Zubair, said about her, I accompanied Aisha, and I never saw anyone more knowledgeable than her when it came to the Quran that was revealed, religious duties, prophetic tradition, poetry, Arab history, family ancestry, judgment, and knowledge of medicine. I said to her, Oh my aunt, where did you learn medicine from? She said, I would get sick and I would be prescribed something as a treatment. Or someone would get sick and something would be prescribed for him. I also heard people prescribing for one another. And I memorized all that. The interview ended. It was 1 p.m. when Nada realized that she had spent multiple hours turning the pages of the biography of the Prophet. She closed the book with shock and amazement. Who was this prophet who caused a young girl to grow into a strong, beloved, balanced, confident, and harmonious character? Nada closed the book and left the office. Passing through the corridors of her spacious house, she felt cold despite her luxurious coat. The heating at home had not been working for a while because Shady didn't refill the fuel tank hoping that Nada would pay for it out of her own money. And she, in return, ignored it, because she felt he was being greedy. Nada passed by the kitchen and looked at the table. There were traces of a meal that Shadi had eaten, by himself. Without bothering to ask if she was hungry, she went to her bedroom. The bracelet was there on the side of the table waiting for Shadi to fix it. He was asleep and snoring with his phone in his hand. Nada lay down on the bed. She wished that the interview had never ended and that she lived as Aisha had lived. This was a quick reading of the story Nada complains to Aisha by Professor Iyad al -Qanibi. Professor Iyad al qanibi is a well-respected scientist with dozens of publications in pharmacology and dozens of writings in religious studies, and one of my personal most admired role models. I will try to translate more of his writings in the future. And if you missed our last story, Muslim Girl Challenges Satan, I am sure you will love it. I will leave link for it in the description below, or you will see it somewhere in the screen right now. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.